Jill Saves the Prince, spoiler-free review. So, yeah, this is probably going to be short. There's not a huge difference between this and the first two. So, it's fitting that I review this so close to Christmas because there has been a Christmas miracle. There is finally context. This one, you know, took them three tries, but they finally actually added some context. So, the story here is that Jill, you know, she, yeah, after she left the jungle and went underground, now that she's, you know, the reason she's saving the prince is that he was abducted by the, let's see, it was, I believe, lizard men who intend to build like a freeway or something, or, or parking spaces, something, you know, yeah, bulldoze over forest and, and build, which, like, it kind of feels like they just, they, they had a lot of different ideas, and they just kind of smushed them together, like, I can, I can get, you know, okay, so the, the, you know, saving royalty, but then you also have, yeah, the fact, it's especially the fact that you're up against lizard people and the thing they're doing to the royal, you know, to the prince is that they're going to bulldoze over forest and, and build. Like, it has an environmental message, which I'm always in favor of, you know, I 100% support, but it just feels kind of weird to, to have lizard people as part of that. And royalty, because royalty are not known for being the most progressive like that's kind of the opposite of what they do but context I'm I'm here for it I, I really appreciate that there actually is yeah and you know it's of course they're gonna be heteronormative and have it be a straight couple and I appreciate you know yeah there's so many where it's a male character saving a female character so you know gender swapping that yeah that's you know, it's a start, and the, yeah, um, ultimately the, the context doesn't matter that much, there's not a huge presence by the lizard people, they show up in, in several levels, but they're not, like, constantly there, and they're ultimately, like, they're not tougher, they're not as tough to, to defeat as the, the flying, fire-throwing demons, um, I forget if this was a thing in the first two, but certainly here, sometimes you'll attack an enemy, and the enemy can't actually be hurt, which it's, you know, I think that's fine. I think it's fine to have enemies that are impossible to defeat. I, I love some of the enemies that are impossible to defeat in, like, I guess maybe just the one, but there's at least one enemy that's impossible to defeat in Commander Keen episode 4, I believe it's called Invasion of the Vorticons or something like that, you know, the this this teal you know, mushroom thing that's got like its tongue out and it's always watching you whether you're on either side of it, its eyes are directed towards you, nothing you can do can hurt it at all, you know, but the thing is, in this game, some of the enemies that you can't kill are enemies that at other times you can kill, so it's like, you know, yeah. Um, yeah, so there's not a lot, yeah, so, yes, the camera, the map screen is now from, you know, it's a, it's a bird's eye view. I, th I kind of, I, I either misread or skimmed or misremembered, but I thought there was more of a, of a different, but the, the overhead view is only for the map level, and it's, you know, it's the same map level overhead view as the Commander King games, you know, or I forget if all of them have it, but some of the Commander King games have it. Yeah, it's it's that same thing. And there is... Yeah, so, like I mentioned, you know, the Lizard people don't make a huge... They're not super... They don't have a huge presence, but they're at least there. Uh, you know, I appreciate that you know, there's now a face to, you know, because before it was like, I don't know who, which one of these enemies I'm supposed to be thinking, ooh, if I, you know, get past this one, or if I, 
you know, take out this one, that's gonna really put a dent in their plans because that's the boss. Just, yeah. And let's see. So yeah, the the map screen makes it you know very non-linear. I, I yeah, you can you can pretty much choose the order. Not not for all of them, but for several levels, you really get to choose. I think there was at least one point where I could choose like three different levels, you know. So that's a and you know I appreciate because like the first one had something similar but didn't go quite as far. I don't think. Yeah, I don't think. And you know, then the second one takes away that and puts you in a very linear space. Because you're you're trapped, you're underground, and then this one brings it back. You're you're empowered again, and that is about it. Yeah, in in some ways, um, yeah, this is definitely the most challenging of the three chapters, and I would say it's yeah, it's the one that comes the closest to. This is still kind of like baby's first platformer, but yeah, that's fine. Something has to be the the you know. I, I wouldn't necessarily, you know, if, if this is the first platform you play, I wouldn't necessarily expect you to keep playing. I would, you know, I would recommend the way I did it by, you know, playing the original Prince of Persia, which really makes you, you know, give, gives you that drive to, to do at least a little bit better next time, because that's one where you have to play it over and over and over to finally get all the way good at it. So that you can be, you know, in part because you only have one hour to cl to clear every single level, you know. Can't even save your progress until level three. And even then, you can only save at the start of a level. So it's like, okay, I got to this level, but I spent a lot of time on it. Maybe I don't want to save. Maybe I want to load and keep trying this level a couple more times until I can save some time so that I have that time for later levels kind of thing, you know. And, you know. Yeah, Prince of, the original Prince of Persia from 1989 and Commander King, Command King, Commander King 4. You know, those were the ones that really, you know, I played other games back then, but those were, you know, I've, I've loved platformers ever since. Like, I also played, like, Tetris and Pac-Man and such, you know, not playing those now. So, uh, yeah, the level design, I appreciate that some levels actually kind of feel like mazes. Like, I think... I think there's been at least one level that's supposed to be a maze in each of these. Certainly there was one that was very maze-y in the second part, but yeah, this one, like, there was one level where I straight up kind of got lost. So that, yeah. And, yeah. I think that is pretty much what I have to say. Yeah, this one took me an hour and 57 minutes, and I see that others have completed it in 90 minutes. Yeah, I th I think you know if I hadn't, if I was still, I'm a little bit out of practice for this sort of thing. You know, that's maybe why it took me a little longer. But yeah, you know, having now played all three, yeah, if you like platformers, this is one I recommend. And I'm not just saying, you know, there's like if you know, no matter how much you love like real time strategy, I'm not necessarily gonna recommend you play a Command Conquer game post like zero hour, you know, so it's not just no. This this scratches that itch, and I believe is it still free on GOG.com? Let's make a quick check. It is still free on GOG.com. So yeah, you know, this is it's it's potentially a you know, if you've played a bunch of you know, early to mid '90s platformers. Obviously, if you're used to more recent platformers, this is gonna feel like ridiculously out of date for you. But yeah, if you like me, have a weakness for this, you know, age of them. Yeah, or if you're thinking, you know, maybe platformers are for me. It's free. You know, worst. You know, worst case scenario, you lose some some time and it ends up not really being for you but yeah that is what I have to say one thing I will yeah so for most of these I haven't really been been spoiling um, but yeah just 
here at the end, brief, brief spoiler for, for the ending. So I do appreciate that the, you know, the plot is resolved by you saving the prince. I'm guessing that means the lizard men, I get, was it for leverage, I guess? Because uh, you don't, I kind of felt, kind of felt like maybe there should have been a boss fight against the chief lizard man, but whatever. But yeah, you know. After that, after this entire thing, you've been playing as a woman instead of a man, then it just ends with a marriage proposal, and they end up together. That felt like... I mean, I get it. This was a different time in gaming. This was way before we were telling more diverse, interesting stories. It just really felt like, wow, you, you really couldn't... You, even when the protagonist is female, you still feel the need to, to end it with a marriage proposal and, you know, oh, it's a happy ending because a woman got married, you know, not really... I'm, I'm not saying there's something wrong with women wanting to get married. You know, don't want to get in hot water like Rachel Zegler did. Seriously, the hate for her is completely unfounded. I get that she can be frustrating, but it's really out of... out of proportion. Anyway, it's just... It's not a super interesting story, and there's so many other places you can go to be told that exact story. So that felt, yeah. Um, but yeah, that was it for this entire trilogy. So, yeah. Um, catch you next time.